today we have a Mantis two cycle rototiller that's having starting problems. Naturally, this is one that I might even keep because I have two of these. Well, mm, I did have two. I only have one now, but I converted into a defatcher. Um, it's kind of like a shared investment, I want to say. Let's put it that way. Anyway, um, but this one I'm going to keep for general yard use and whatnot. It's had its moments in time, but not now. So here's the thing about these. I love these engines. They're great engines. They're technically Echo. They're made by the exact same people. However, there's one downfall of this engine, besides it having almost a full tank of gas, is the carburetor. Not very surprising. So, how you fix a non-starting Mantis is one of these. Don't bother cleaning it. Don't bother any of that. Let me explain why. Let me just show you what's in here. These fuel lines are actually pretty good. The story behind this one is the person took it to the shop. They repaired it. Paid uh, 80 something dollars for the repair. Took it home and used it for maybe an hour over the course of a Let's not put that in dirt, let's put that in the towel. Um, anyway, that's a fuel line and grommet. That's an important part of the grommet. So they end up... Now let's just take a towel and put it all down so you can see it. Anyway, so put it away without fuel. Then, and this is someone that I've, I've worked with before and I know, and I know this person is going to be telling me the truth. He then took it back out, put fuel in it, non-ethanol, and it still isn't wanting to run. I attempted to tune it. It's just not tuning. There's something wrong with the carburetor. It's just what happens. They just, they're so finicky. And you would have to clean it and take it apart and maybe change a diaphragm or something. So, spark plug. Old. Old. Brand new carburetor. Two air filters. And two um, various types of gaskets, depending on the type that you need. Um, if you're going to get the air filter and the fuel line and grommet kit only, they're going to run like eight bucks. Um, this whole thing cost me nine dollars and forty eight cents. And I don't have to clean anything. I don't have to do anything. This filter's trash, so. Like, why? Why wouldn't you just replace it? I mean, yes. I will give you that. It's not the highest quality of carburetor. But even if you kept this for two years and didn't work again in two years, and you bought another $9 carburetor, put it on there with a full tune up kit, mind you, and started working, you paid a dollar to not have to worry about it for two years. Take some of the pieces off of the carburetor, chuck the rest in the recycling bin because it is um, aluminum. And it goes off and does whatever it needs to do in its next application. I'm about 95% sure they replace the fuel lines. Because those fuel lines are pretty good. 
do that to relieve the pressure because I'm going to be taking off the fuel lines. And if you don't, you will get a whole bunch of fuel coming your direction. So I'm going to keep that ground up because the looks of it is pretty good. And I'm going to uh, put it back another way. So let's see here. The short line is going to the top and the long one is going to the bottom. definitely right. It is new. I might have to put the fuel line in though. The whole piece came out that I left for the carburetor, the brass piece. Let's see if we can't wedge that out. Let's slow it. should be tuned. Um, it's usually not, but we'll see. Short one, top, one, bottom, take our throttle cable, put that in there, move this off to the side, it's just a little bent. Put this back on. It's a shelf work it. That's pretty nice. So this, I guess I should say the problem is twofold on this. One, it won't stay running for very long. It will run on idle. But even on idle, over time, it will start chugging, start cutting out, and then over, it will die. And then once you, you start to hear it chug and uh, die, it was the, I forgot, that it was the gas on there? Yes, it was. Okay, well, let's put the gasket on. Anyway, um, so it would eventually just die. And we gave it gas after a thought it was starting to run appropriate for a while, it would then, which would we need? Four holes. It would then uh, not rev up. It would just fall, fall flat. So, that is a dead giveaway that we have some type of fuel issue. The sounds of it, a lean issue. If you 
don't, I'm sure any dollar store around the world would have one for you to use. Or for you to buy, I should say. Let's say you even had to buy both of those from the dollar store. You're now at twelve dollars when you round up. Maybe you pay tax in the state you live in. Maybe you don't. So that could increase the price a little bit. Um, so to test this, we're gonna push the primer bowl. sure to actually close the lid. There we go. Let's That's usually normal for this type of engine. of the on and off switch being a little sketchy. You have to clean that up. Uh, works pretty good. Okay, well, save myself what is that? We put it at $12 with tools. Tool with the other one down to be $68. By doing it myself, put it in. Granted, you're going to want to take this with you the first time you go out and adjust it. It should be where it's pretty close. I adjusted the low, which is the one closest to the engine. Um, a little more, just to kind of lower the, the idle. And it, it seemed like it was bogging. Okay. 
Okay, well, if you like what you see, definitely keep on watching. Okay, so what I do is I just put a little oil down it. And it's worth it a little bit to kind of maybe see there's some type of grime on the connection. It's usually what ends up happening. It has been outside, unfortunately. But let's see if that cures the problems. Really going to be the end of this. 